Hey guys, in this lesson I want to show you what I'm calling, for lack of a better phrase, the three finger milonga. If you've heard that word milonga before, this is like an Argentine tango thing. It's really just a fast tango rhythm. We're only going to use our thumb, index, and middle fingers. And when it gets right down to it, this is really just a Roomba. So we're going to do uh, things that I've talked about before, a group of three, a group of three, and a group of two. And we're going to put some really cool chords on this uh, that you saw me play at the beginning and have a little, kind of a little thing that you can expand on and kind of make, maybe make it into a song of your own. But let's start out with just a basic old A minor chord. And we're going to go to E7 in a second, but we only need to know those two chords for now. And uh, we're going to go like this. That might sound a little bit more like a tango to you. It might sound a little more recognizable because it's an unambiguous A minor chord. So that's why it's going to sound more tango. The pattern is just going to be this. We're going to play our thumb on the bass string, our middle finger on the B string, and then our index finger on the G string. Okay, uh, number wise, that is the fifth string, then the second string, then the third string. Okay, so I'm going P, M, I. PMI, PMI. You saw at the beginning I was muffling the strings. That makes it sound so cool. We're going to add that in a minute. Um, but for now, we just want to get this pattern down. So I'm on the fifth string playing the thumb. Then my middle finger plays the second string. Then my index plays the third string. Do it all again. That was a group of three. Okay, just did it twice. And now just do not three, but two. So thumb and then middle on the string. So the pattern is this. And that really is a Roomba pattern. We can think of it as three, three, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, or a Roomba in the sense of four, four time, we could say we're going one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and, and those are the Roomba accents, an accent on the one, on the and of two and the four. And by the way, if we only play those bass notes, it would sound like this, one, and four, one and two and three and four. So that's the groove that we have for this whole thing here. Now place your A minor chord there and just do it without muffling yet. We're just gonna play that same pattern now with the chord. Okay, we're gonna spice it up a little bit by changing the bass notes just a little bit. So this time, the second time that your thumb plays, play on the next string like this. One and two and three and that note that we played was just a note in the chord. It just gives us more sense of movement and harmonic uh, things are happening there. And then your pinky right here on this C note, and that is our pattern for this chord. So we go. Get it going a little faster. At the very end of the measure, we have this little stutter where we just play the thumb and the middle finger, but ding, and um, just careful not to pause right there. We gotta get right back into the measure. Now, what's going to make it sound really cool, and what I think that is so cool about tango music, Argentine tango, is that um, there's this attitude to it, and I think that's achieved in large part by playing staccato. So I'm going to mute the strings here. If you played rock guitar, we would call this palm muting. We could call it pizzicato in classical guitar world. But now it sounds a little more like, I'd like to use that word, attitude sounds so much more cool right but to do this we really have to kind of it takes a little bit of tension I'm kind of pushing my wrist in here so now like normally we wouldn't want to have um, we wouldn't want to play like a bass player like an electric bass player like this with our wrist stuck here but I am kind of pushing it in so that I can kind of clamp down on these strings but not too hard and sometimes you might move it around and when, when it starts buzzing too much we don't want that to happen but it's gonna happen and notice also that I have my ring finger and even my pinky underneath the first string. In this pattern, this whole thing today, we're not even playing the string. So it's okay to grab the string, especially when we're trying to muffle the other ones. It gives us a nice little anchor. Okay, now go to an E7 chord. We're going to do a very similar thing like this. So what's happening there is really the same exact thing, but because the root of the chord is the E string instead of the fifth string, we're going to start on the sixth string. So we go E... B and then G sharp only because that's a note in the chord. So we go. The index and the middle are doing the same thing. And back to A minor. Sounds really cool when you get it going fast. Now, that's something that, um, whether it's slow or fast, that you could use as an intro into um, a lot of different Roombas that you might know. If you have a Roomba in A minor that you know, start out with that. Go E7 to A minor. You could play a little bit around with those bass notes. 
and then get into the Roomba there. That does have a more of a tango vibe than a Roomba, but um, they're so interrelated. And like I said, this Milonga rhythm is really just like a fast tango or a fast Roomba. Okay, now that we know the pattern, let's plug in these other chords I was doing and we get a really cool effect here. We're playing a B5 chord, so a power chord on the second fret, B, F sharp, and my pinky is here on the octave of B. And we're gonna be playing the same strings that we just talked about, but we end up playing the B string open, and then there's the B again that I'm fingering. So we hear the same note twice, and it creates this really cool kind of um, delay effect, or almost like a rock guitar thing. It reminds me of the intro to Knight Rider, for those of you of a certain age. That's my age. But we're gonna go from here down to a G in the bass, but that really is like a G major seventh chord. So this chord progression is super, I, I love this progression. It's so awesome. It sounds like Eminence Front from The Who. Except we're not gonna play a power chord here. We're gonna go like this. I'm not gonna mute with the right hand yet. So some other stuff going on there in the bass. So first we wanna go. So I'm adding this A note open and coming back to the B, plugging this pattern in. So I went to the next string like we talked about earlier. And I'm coming back to the string, only this time it's open, and then just start it again. Okay, what does it sound like if we lightly mute it? it sounds so much more mysterious. Okay, now I'm going down to this G chord, keeping these two fingers, but in a second, we're gonna lift this off and play an open D string on the way back down, watch this. back. Now as a turnaround, we can go down the scale, something like that. Now I like to do a little ending here where I go like this, and this is very weird and cool. Notice what happened there? Because my thumb traveled to the G string, we end up playing the same note twice with different fingers. So I'm going, I end up like, without the left hand, going like this. P, M, I, just like we've been doing it. But when we add these notes to it, it has this really cool repetition effect here. I'm gonna start here. Up to this D note, and then B in the bass and let those ring over each other. So nice and slow. Let's put all this stuff together and see what it sounds like. Take this pattern and work with it. Add some stuff to that. We're in the key of B minor there, or take it to another key. Do it on any chord progression that you can think of. Here's a D minor chord. What if I did the cycle of fourths? See what that sounds like. So any chord progression that you know, or any single chord, you can add this pattern to it. Sounds really awesome. And I think it works great as an intro into a song that you already know. Of course, you could also use this as a starting point to make your own song. Hey, if you like what I teach on Nylon String, be sure to like and subscribe. And check out my membership where I have all kinds of stuff like this, all kinds of courses, music theory stuff, technique, everything having to do with Nylon String Guitar.